We are live in the Facebook group. Make sure our Facebook group here. All right, we're live in the Facebook group. Hope you guys are well. We're uh, starting here in a couple minutes. What am I doing? So if you're just, uh, thank you guys for joining. If you're just joining with us, you're part of this Facebook group. Um, you need, uh, you can go to the uh, feature section here where you can see all the recent replays of all the different topics we talk about, or you can go to the guide section and watch all the replays there. We have it in the guide section as well. So check that out. There's over 110, maybe 100 plus training videos on everything we do, how to flip. Basically, we're teaching you how to flip and cash flow houses using none of your own credit, none of your own cash, and uh, using team the principles at the same time. We're doing everything the right way, right? <clears throat> and and uh, I've been doing this for uh, 12 years full time. So done thousands of transactions already, not sure exactly how many, but we uh, we can show you exactly what we're doing. This is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go over a closed transaction so you can see how we found the deal, how we uh, negotiated, how much money we made. So you can kind of duplicate and copy our success. Oh, that's what I was gonna do, I forgot. So I'm gonna do, on these calls, I'm gonna do free, uh, Free coaching. So um, I'm going to try to drop the Zoom link. If you need some free coaching, live free coaching, just jump on the Zoom. You can unmute yourself. So I'm going to I'm going to drop the link into the uh, title and then into the comments. So I'm going to try to do that every uh, every training. Put the Zoom link in there. So every training, I'm gonna try to you know connect with you guys more. Uh, if you guys need help, you can just pop on and ask your questions, or just jump. Uh, you can put it in the comments. What happened? You can put it in the comments, or you can uh, uh, just uh, join the Zoom link and then unmute yourself, and we can talk. So uh, free coaching, you guys. You can jump on if you want, and we can uh, walk you through any questions that you have regarding wholesaling or anything else that we teach, okay? So if you're in the Chicago area, uh, you want to join our buyers list if you're not on it. If you're looking for rehabs, fix and flips, buy and holds, uh, bestchicagowholesalegood.com forward slash buyers. We are in like five different states as well. So, uh, you know, if you're in Florida, Texas, uh, Arizona, the Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, let us know. Uh, we have, we have uh, deals in those areas as well. Uh, we can add you to the, the, that's a different list, right? If you need a buyer for your deal, um, submit your deal here. We'll see if we, uh, the deal, the numbers work for us. And uh, as a free gift, um, kingdomariaacademy.com, it goes over our five offer system, teaching you how to do rent to own. So, uh, Rent to own and owner financing are kind of interchangeable. Uh, Airbnb, learn how to flip a cash flow houses without cash and credit using kingdom principles. So it's free. Check that out. There's over like 10 hours of probably not 10 hours, maybe seven, eight hours of training that you can watch for free on um, going over our five offer system. If you're interested in a coach and a mentor to handhold you through deals uh, to see if we're a good fit, you can reach out to me, 773-417-6988. What we do is we partner on deals and then we split profits. So we mentor people, coach people. We give them all the tools, the automation they need, websites, CRM, all the leads that they need to call. And then we split profits 50-50. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, it's a win-win for us, win-win for you. Uh, when you, when you, uh, you know, our goal is to get you to the closing table, right? So it's good when the, your coach has a, has a uh, investment into the deal 
that you know if they if you close a deal then it, uh, we get paid and you get paid right so we're gonna talk about a deal that we just closed a wholesale deal we just closed uh last week we closed uh two last week one for about nine thousand the other one for about eighteen thousand so we just closed a deal in Chicago we're gonna go over the deal we're gonna talk about how we found the deal by it was basically a referral we're gonna talk about branding how we negotiated and closed the deal um how we profited the deal, how we can get more deals. And then we're going to talk about uh, branding, become the go-to at something. And uh, we're going to go into this deal. So let's see like how we uh, got everything on this deal. Okay, So we're going to go into the deal that we just closed. And we don't put all of our deals on our site. So a lot of the deals that we have sell before they before we market them. So um, this is a deal that we just closed in uh, West Pullman. We made an $18,000 assignment fee. And basically the deal was from a uh, referral, was through branding. So um, referrals are the best. Uh, why? Because uh, a lot of times you don't even have to close the deal. They're, they're already closed because of your referral. Um, what that means is um, someone, someone referred you that you're like the go-to guy in the area for you know selling the deal right so referrals are some of the best uh the easiest leads to close because you're someone already built you up and uh told them who you are and what you do and you don't really have to do much negotiating which is what we did on this deal you know we just got a some uh seller texted us sent us all the e pictures all the images it sent us um, all the details of the property and we just analyzed it uh, via email and we just went back and forth via email with the offer. And it was, you know, there wasn't really any uh, meeting the seller or, or negotiating. They were, they were really, um, they already closed that we can close the deal. So how we negotiated this via email, via text. And we're gonna go into the, uh, we can go into the address. That's eventually what you want to get to. In the beginning, you're, you you don't have any referrals, um, but you want to get to the point of uh, branding yourself as the go-to person in the area. And then uh, in the future, but the work you did two years ago, three years ago, um, you're getting you're getting deals in your inbox based upon you know the work you did for some other people in the past, right? So eventually, you know, referrals, people referring you, um, giving you a good good testimony, and closing deals. Um, that's going to be the the best leads. You know, there's really no marketing costs in those leads. It's, it's you know zero marketing costs, and really there's a you know limited a limited upside to it as to how much you can make, right? <clears throat> so that's why it's always good to uh, take care of everyone in the transaction, make sure that everyone's getting paid, make sure that you're always uh, living up to your word and uh, people are, are, you know, if you do a good job, people are going to refer you and send you deals. And that's where you want to get to the point where, like for me, um, I have 20 to 30 deals I just uh, look at every single day and they come in through my inbox, right, from uh employees that we hire that are sending us deals to people that we're mentoring and partnering with to just realtors referring us deals or uh, other other wholesalers or other investors referring us deals so to, um so let's look at this deal so you, you can go into redfin and uh you click this little map nearby homes for sale to get the comps and then what you're doing is you're looking at all the sold uh properties in the last six months that are similar. This is a single family home. So we're looking at single family and similar square footage. So this property is, uh, I think about 1200 or so square feet. It's uh, actually 900. So we're gonna sort by uh, sold, and then we're going to filter. I typically you want to do like 15 percent 
and under on the square footage. So if it's 900 square feet, I'm probably gonna look at everything like under uh, 1,001 and under to get my uh, comps. So I have the sole comps in the last six months, similar square footage, not it's got to sort by the highest sold to the lowest. So these are the absolute highest that sold in the area. Uh, when you do a map nearby homes for sale, you're kind of too close. So I would zoom out maybe once right here. So if you zoom out once, you should have enough comps, especially if you're in Chicago. But if you don't have enough comps, maybe you only have like one or two or three comps, um, then you probably want to zoom out again. Here I got 15, so that's that's a good size uh, comps already. So we have 215, 205, 203. So these are the three highest sold comps in the neighborhood, right? So we have uh, 215. So if you just add these three together and divide by three, that's going to give you your average, which is, uh, that's not right. 215 plus 205 plus 203 divided by three, then you have uh, 207. So ARV is 207. And I wonder if it changed. Let's see. Yeah, it, did. it went down. So it, it was 230 about like uh, a couple months ago. Now it's only 207. So that shows you the market is, is dropping pretty fast. So this this one we had on our contract, maybe. Uh, uh, it took a, it took a, it took a while to close because we had buyers that couldn't get the hard money loan. They went to find another buyer. That happened actually three times. So it did take a couple months to actually get it to the closing table. And um, this was uh, two thirty ARV, and now it's only two oh seven. So you know, and that's happening all over Chicago, where the the prices are actually going down pretty fast, uh, just like that, where. Three months later, they lose 20 grand of equity. So be very careful of buying any like fix and flips. You know, always, you know, buying holes, of course, if, if the cash flow makes sense, you're going to make, you know, a thousand a month uh, and you're going to, you plan on holding it forever. Of course, you know, keep buying those, but if you're trying to do like a fix and flip, it's going to be uh, hard in this market, right? So we're at uh, two, so ARV is uh, 207, right? So you gotta get the ARV is, uh, and then the rehab cost. So what's the ARV, what's the rehab cost? This is how, these are the two things that you get the uh, the offer and then your your wholesale fee, what you wanna make, let's put 10,000 down here. So how do we get the rehab cost? Uh, of course, we look at pictures, we try to get the condition of the property from the homeowner. If there's any uh, major repairs needed, so you're gonna see that this property is uh, not in bad shape. It's a cosmetic rehab. This is the basement here. The floors, uh, drywall, this needs paint, uh, new kitchen. It needs new kitchens, new baths, uh, update the basement flooring. So it's, it's, it's in uh, cosmetic rehab condition. So we would estimate that uh, or with the rehab cost, we would estimate that $20 a square foot. So we have 900 on the first floor and 900 in the basement. So that's uh, 1800 square feet times 20. And then this has a, uh, doesn't have a garage. So we also need to build a garage because the comps have garages. So we got 1800 times 20, you got 36. 36,000, and then you have 15,000 to build a garage. So you're looking at about $51,000 $51, rehab cost uh, total. So you have 51K here. So the formula everyone uses, or all lenders use pretty much, is you take the ARV, you times uh, 0 0.70, you subtract out the rehab, and then you should track out your wholesale fee, which you want to make. So we're taking um, the price, the ARV did go down by 23,000 since we last looked at it, 51,000. So 207,000 times 
minus 51,000 minus our $10,000 wholesale fee. So this deal, our max offer would be about 83,900, right? And we did um, actually get this for about 80, I think it was like 80, uh, 84. And then there was a realtor that came and they, they added their fee on top. So we, we uh, they sold it for about 103K sales price. So it was about a $19,000 spread, you know, minus attorney fees. Uh, so about $18,000 total in the uh, profit. So um, one thing you do have to do is, uh, you know, you do the formula and then double check. We, we go on the market and look at everything active. Look at everything active on the market, see what's what's happening as far as uh, properties nearby. So I'll go to for sale, active. Uh, I'm gonna look at the lowest. Now I'm looking at the lowest uh, active properties on the market. And I'm gonna take off square footage because there might be a house that's bigger that's selling for cheaper. And then we're going to see if we can find a, uh, if I can find a um, cosmetic rehab that is uh, same 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 condition as our property. This looks like a gut rehab, um, and it's selling for a better price. So, so if you know this this one at forty thousand, you can tell it's a total gut rehab. Um, it's boarded up. You can see the fire damage. So. This needs a total gut rehab. It's not in cosmetic rehab condition, so it's not similar to our property. But if this was a cosmetic rehab at 40, and let's say this one at 64 was also a cosmetic rehab, then I need to be lower because if a buyer can go into the market and, and find a better deal um, than mine, then uh, my deal is no longer a good deal, right? So uh, the buyer would just go down the street and buy the other one, right? So this one's at 95. I don't see if there's any uh, pictures here. So let's say this one, you know, this one at 95, my computer is uh, I'm pretty slow. Well, this one's a total rehab. So this is not a cosmetic rehab either. So I'm pretty confident this is a cosmetic. So 96 looks like it does look like it's cosmetic, not a total gut job. So I got to beat this guy. So 97 is the guy I got to beat. So if I get it for, um, you know, 83, 84, then I go and try to resell it for uh, 95, which is basically what we did. We, we put it on the market for 95. And um, and we got a buyer uh, with a realtor added their fee on top. So we, had, we got it for 95. We, this is exactly what we did. We got it under contract at about 84, sold it for, uh, well, you know, minus the attorney fee, sold it for 95. So uh, you want to, you know, do the formula, ARV 70% minus rehab, minus your wholesale fee. And then at the same time, turn around and check everything active and on the market. And, and that's going to tell you, so this is, uh, this does hit the 70%, so th that number, but if, like I said, if, if you looked at everything active on the market, and you need to be, you know, and these guys, this guy at 65 was cosmetic rehab, then I need to be at like maybe four, you know, uh, 55, and then try to resell for 63, right, because I want to be the best deal on the market, the buyer can't go and find a better deal in the area, right. So in that case, it's no longer 70% of ARV. It, it may be more so of even, it could be 60%, it could be uh, 55%. So, you, you know, this formula, you know, you want to use the formula and then double check. And you're always going to go with the uh, lower number as far as, uh, you know, when you double check uh, the properties available. Right. So 
you have to get ARV and rehab costs and then um rehab rehab for this one you know cosmetic for say twenty dollars a square foot and if you're in Chicago you have basements and most of all the rehabs are or basements are finished so you got to make sure that um you're adding the basement square footage and another thing is um you're gonna look at the comps so one thing I didn't do was uh that I should have done was you you guys should look at the uh sold look at the sold comps like their pictures the highest sold comps what I'm gonna do is go back to all the properties under a thousand one in the area so you see the these properties are 215 205 I got to rehab my property to look like the 215 205 comps. So my property has to look like this, right? So if you go into the property, you got to make sure that, um, you know, does it have a basement? Is the basement finished? Is there a garage, right? So if, if let's say the basement's unfinished and there's no garage and all the highest sold comps, then you don't have to finish your basement or build a garage because all the highest sold comps also don't have a garage or a basement, right? And you can tell from the pictures or you can simply go to uh, the property uh, details area and then find the, the parking. So you can see there is a garage here, garage space. Then you can find uh, basement. It says basement is finished. So I have to finish my, you know, if I look at three or four comps, the highest sold, they all have finished basements, they all have garages. So my property also needs a finished basement and a garage. So that has to be factored into your rehab cost, right? But let's say, let's just give an example, which sometimes does happen. Um, let's say that these comps, 215, 205, 203, they all are, uh, they're, they're all not rehab and they're all in cosmetic condition, maybe same condition as your property, right? So so in that case, if it's the same exact condition, um, then you don't have to take any rehab costs out because um, if they're all in the same condition, then you don't have to take the rehab costs out, right? So you got to make sure that when I am uh, about to take a rehab cost out, I'm looking at the uh, condition of the highest sold comp. So these are all fully rehab, but let's just say they're all in the same condition as my property. They're all cosmetic rehabs. Then I wouldn't I wouldn't really take any uh, of the rehab out of the uh, of the equation, right? So if it's not a cosmetic rehab, if all the comps are not cosmetic rehab, I'm just going to do the. In that case, I'm just going to do 207 times 0.7. Minus my wholesale fee, I'll be at 134, right? So those are just some things to look at, okay? So that's how we analyze the deal. Um, let's go over uh, how we uh, profit the deal. We just did an assignment agreement. The, the, the owner was aware we we're signing the contract, so was the buyer. You want to make sure everyone up front is aware of what you do. If you, if you, you know, if your intent is to wholesale it, then you should, you know, position yourself up front with the seller and the buyer too. That you're, uh, you're not the owner. You're, uh, you're not the buyer. That you're going to be bringing a buyer, right? And the problem with uh, today is a lot of people lie and pretend that they're the buyer, and they never have any intent to buying the property, and they just tie the deal up looking for a buyer. The seller, you know, once the seller lives there and they move out of the house and they think they have a closing happening, and all of a sudden, you know, they realize that you had no intent of even purchasing the property, right? And that's where we get all these problems with, you know, passing laws and and, and stuff against wholesaling, right? How can we get more of these deals? Um, I'm going to talk really quick about branding, um, become the go-to at something. So you need to become the go-to at something. If you If no one knows who you are, and you're not the go-to at anything, then uh, it's going to be very hard to get any leads, right? Don't make the mistake of making only the wholesale offer. Learn also the five different offers. Like this month, we got uh, a couple air, new Airbnbs where we're going to make 
2,000 a month off one. The other one we're going to make maybe 800 to 1,000 a month off off the other one. We closed. Uh, uh, we're closing a listing this month. Uh, we're closing. We closed uh, three wholesale deals uh, this month. So you got to, you know, especially in this in this market shift where you know prices are going down pretty fast. Uh, you want to uh, shift and and learn how to do rent to own, how to do owner financing, how to uh, manage Airbnbs and make a profit, right? So we're gonna talk about branding, which is uh, the best way to get deals from referrals from people just knowing who you are and what you do. Uh, you gotta become a celebrity in your space, get people to know who you are and what you do. And a lot of that comes from uh, serving others, giving, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, doing meetup groups and just giving everything I know away for free for the past um, uh, 10 years or so. I, I started a meetup group in Chicago, just giving everything away for free that I know. And, um, and you know, people that I helped eight years ago, I'm still partnering with and doing deals. People that I helped five years ago, I'm, I'm doing deals with, right? So, uh, you know, serving others, just being generous, um, you know, doing everything you can to help the other person, help other people succeed um, is, is going to go a long way, right? Focus on something and go all in. Uh, when I first started, I focused on buyers because we were like in a recession back in 2010, I think is when I first started about. And I focused on finding the buyer first and then finding them great deals off market. Right. So that was my focus. So you need to focus on and that's a good strategy in this market, too. Um, and you need to focus on a market to start. You can't just be jumping around from thing to thing to thing and, uh, uh, you know, focus. Right. Like if you're, for example, there's so many different strategies in this business. You can focus on pre foreclosure sellers. You can focus on sellers behind in their taxes. You can focus on probate leads. Uh, you can focus on buyers that are looking for, uh, uh, there, there's not, you know, a lot of buyers have left that are, do, we're doing fix and flips, but, you know, there's still hot markets where they're still doing them. You got to find them. Uh, but first, yeah, first make sure you're in a market people are buying, right? How do you do that? I did some training on, uh, on uh, you should watch in the Facebook group. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Um, the market shifting, what you should do now. You should go into, uh, uh, you know, list source and find out exactly the hot markets where people are still buying. And then that way, um, you're making sure that you're in a market where people are actually still buying properties, right? Because uh, we've done some deals in Florida and the deals sold in like 24 hours. So it was super easy because the market was super hot. Then we have deals here in Chicago uh, that were struggling to sell because the buyers have left because there's no retail buyer, right? So if you are focusing all your energy on a market that's declining, everyone's leaving, uh, it's going to be a lot harder. Whereas you reverse that, find a market where everyone is uh, going to and is still hot, it's going to be a lot easier, right? So focus on something, go all in. Um, I have people that, I have students that just focus on Airbnb. I had one student go from zero to 28 Airbnbs in one year, right? I have people that just focus on owner finance deals or rent to own deals. I have people that just focus on doing normal listings. So uh, focus on something and go all in. But when leads come in, um, let's say that you're focused on getting sellers or landlords to do Airbnb with you and you partner with them. Uh, but when leads come in, um, you can still offered the cash we can wholesale you can still offer owner financing rent to own you can still offer to list it um so when leads come in don't reject deals that could be a wholesale deal just because you focused on airbnb no you, you know, you're focusing on one thing so that you can create a name for yourself so people start knowing who you are and you can start um branding yourself where people are just going to refer you uh refer you deals right uh, working today will produce fruit later. Stay consistent. Um, but yeah, focus on something and and go all in. Put the blinders on, and and just focus. Right. Stay in. Stay. Stay on on the path where you just. I'm gonna focus on this. This is what I want to do. 
And the problem is when you just say, oh, it's not working, then you go to a different thing and then you go to a different thing. I would say give it at least six months of consistency where you're making offers every single day for six months straight. Um, and you're doing that consistently for six months and you're also following up, following up, following up with everybody. Um, people, people, people fail, newbies fail because uh, they don't have like a follow-up list, right? The first three to six months, they have like zero people to follow up with. Then three months later, six months later, you got 500 people that you made an offer on and you're consistently following up with them. And that's when you start seeing, that's when you start seeing the fruit, right? You start seeing um, what you did, you know, you, three months ago, you start seeing the fruit later, right? And that's how it works. And then almost every business is uh, you need a follow-up list. You need an email list, a follow-up list that you call or text. And then that's going to be your money maker in the future, right? So the four things um, to do deals is basically find leads, uh, and we have tons of training in the Facebook group how to find leads, uh, know how to analyze deals like we did today. We showed you how we analyzed it and made the offer. Uh, the third thing is negotiate, build rapport, and close. If people don't like you, they don't trust you. They don't, you know, they're most likely they're not going to do business with you, right? So. Um, learn how to negotiate, learn how to build rapport, learn how to close, and then know how to profit your deal, which is how to sell your deal. Um, so this deal, uh, so we use, uh, we, we have a pretty big email list. So we, we use ClickFunnels to email our, uh, no, I'm not going to go into ClickFunnels, but we use ClickFunnels to email our list. So we have about 20, maybe 28,000, 29,000 emails on our email list in the Chicago market. And so we just go to ClickFunnels, we put the ad together, and we send all 29,000 people the uh, on our email list the deal. And then, um, you know, and then, we, and then we find the buyer, the, you know, the buyer go see it. We, uh, we get the earnest money contract signed, and then we go to closing, right? So if anyone has any questions, uh, reach out. This is my number, my email. And uh, if you guys are interested in, in mentorship, partnering, reach out. Uh, we only taking on like uh, like max, like 10, 10 new people a month. That's like as much as I can handle because you're dealing directly with me um, as far as uh, the, the hand holding and the mentoring. So reach out, uh, reach out to us, see, see if you're a good fit and we can go from there, right? So we're in a book called Purpose Driven Life. You never read it. Uh, you got to read it. Um, I think the most important thing is finding out what not our purpose is, but what is uh, God's purpose for our life. And if you haven't found that out yet, um, I believe you're you're lost. You're you're going the wrong way if you never found that out yet. So you you have to change the direction of where you're going. And when I found out God's purpose for my life through reading the Bible, reading Scripture. I, I pivoted, I changed the way where I was going, I changed direction and went a different way towards God, right, instead of away. So that's what, I, that's why, uh, um, you know, we read this, uh, I go through this book, uh, going through scripture and what's our purpose, what does God say is our purpose in life, and um, it's, it's, it's the best life to live, right, and amazing thing happens when we offer praise and thanksgiving to God, when we give God enjoyment, our heart, our own hearts are filled with joy. And that's what we got to do is walk around with joy in our hearts. And it makes, you know, even through problems, even through struggle, even through pain, right? We walk around with joy in our hearts. How do we do that? Because we know even in death, you know, that's when our real life starts, right? Like even the worst of the worst thing that happened to me if I die, that's when the real joy starts, right? So we're not afraid of anything, even death, right? <clears throat> and walking around filled with joy, um, it, everything's going to be easier. It's going to be easier to do wholesale deals, get contract signs. It's going to be easier to build rapport. It's going to be easier to raise money for your deals. It can be easier to close Airbnb deals, to rent to own deals, owner finance deals. People want to do business with people they like and trust. Right. If you're walking around depressed, walking around angry all the time, walking around gossiping, walking around complaining about everything, um, people don't like that. Right. Like I know there's guys I get on the phone with, you know, I'm doing business with 
and I get on the phone with them and they want to like, you know, do more business with me. And they're over here cussing and, and complaining. And like, I don't want to partner with a guy like that. Right. I want to partner with someone that is filled with joy, that is always looking at the positive, that is always looking to encourage, to lift up, to, uh, to help people. Right. And that's, that's who you should surround yourself with people like that. Right. <clears throat> So from the book, uh, my mom loved to cook for me. Mom prepared credible home cooked feasts. One of her great pleasures in life was watching us kids eat and enjoy what she prepared. The more we enjoyed eating it, the more enjoyment it gave her. But we also enjoyed pleasing mom by expressing our enjoyment of her meal. It worked both ways. As I would eat the great meal, I would rave about it and praise my mother. I intended not only to enjoy the food, but to please my mother. And everyone was happy. And worship works both ways to uh, we enjoy what God has done for us. And when we express the enjoyment to God, it brings him joy, but it also increases our joy. In the book of Psalms 68.3, it says, uh, but let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. And the reason why God wants you to have joy and rejoice all the time, um, if you look at like studies and science, even science is coming up, you know, approving what the bible says like it, people that walk around appreciative joyful happy um they have less diseases less uh depression you know a lot of people are are just just meditating on gratitude and appreciation and joy everything they have in their life um it's it's uh there's studies showing it's you know they have less risk of cancer less risk of heart disease less risk of liver problems stomach, all, everything right if, if you um make it a ritual a daily ritual of, writing down everything that you can rejoice and be glad and and start it, you know, read it in the morning every day. I, I have a, a ritual every morning. I just, everything that God's given me that I've been blessed with, you know, write it down and I just thank him every day for it, you know, and then you add things to it all the time. And then you start your day in this mindset of uh, appreciation, of gratitude, of joy. And I'm telling you, like you get a, you get a seller on the phone and you're in this state of mind, it's going to be easier to get the deal signed. It's going to be easier to, to, uh, to uh, raise money for real estate. It's going to be easier to build rapport with people and, and get them to like you and trust you so that you can turn around and Airbnb their property for the next year, next two years, right? God smiles is going to be using our abilities after the after the flood, God gave Noah these simple instructions. Be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. In Genesis 9.1.3. So um, when God says this in Genesis, he's also talking about us. Like he's talking to the human race, basically. Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, and multiply. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just like I give you green pass now, I give you everything. So everything that, you know, we eat every day, everything that, um, all the food that we eat, it's, it's from the ground, right? If you look at it like you're eating an apple, right? And when you eat the apple, there's seeds, there's uh, seeds in that apple. And then one seed in an apple can create a, a forest of apples, right? And, that, you know, everything we eat, you get orange, you have seeds in the orange, lemons, you have seeds and lemons. You just put that in the right environment, the right soil, and you give it enough water and sunlight, all of a sudden you have a apple tree, right? And then that one apple tree can create a hundred apples. And you take another, you take one of those hundred apples and you plant that and you keep planting it. And then one one seed from one apple could be, you know, a thousand apples. It could be a forest of apple trees, right? And that's how God created it, is everything is in abundance. He made one man and one woman. And they, you know, the man planted the seed in the woman, all of a sudden there's a human race where we have billions, right? And that's how he created everything, you know, through, through one little seed um, that created billions and millions, billions. God said it's time to get on with your life. These are the things I had designed humans to do. Uh, make love your spouse, have babies, raise families, plant crops, eat meals, be humans. This is what I made you to be. God enjoys watching every detail of your life. The one thing I want to say is that, you know, when, when, when you plant like an apple, right, and you put it in the right soil with the right water, with the right sunlight, and it starts growing, right? 
um, in the in the gospel, you know, God, God says, "Hey, you know, why are you worrying? You, know, you see the lilies of the field. You know, they're they're not worrying. You see the the birds in the air. They're they're flying and they're not worrying, right?" <clears throat> we're we're made to be in the presence of god we we as humans we were made to live in his presence and that's where we will flourish that's where we will grow right outside of god's presence outside of a relationship with god that's where we're gonna we're gonna die and wither away but in his presence just like a seed in the right soil in the right environment with the right water with the right sunlight um it's gonna grow we're gonna grow you know we we are we are made to live in God's presence and live with him and uh, have a relationship with him, right? So uh, you may feel the only time God is uh, pleased with you is when you're doing spiritual activity, like reading the Bible, attending church, praying, or sharing your faith. You may think God is unconcerned about the other parts of your life. Actually, God enjoys watching every detail of your life, whether you're working, playing, resting, or eating. He doesn't miss a single move you make. The Bible tells us in Psalms 37, 23, the steps of the godly are directed by the Lord and he delights in every detail of their life. That's what you want to do is you want to, you know, find out, you know, what's my purpose? Why are we here? Why did God create us, right? And when you find that out um, through the scriptures, through, Bi through the Bible, once you have the revelation, the knowledge, then you start doing that. You start walking that path, right? So God says, uh, one of the one of the commands is worship him, praise him, rejoice, be enjoyed. That that's something that we should always be looking to do, right? Another command is uh, uh, serve uh, is to connect with uh, other believers, with with other people. Connect, love, encourage others. Be generous. Give of your time. Give of your talents. Give of your skills. That's another command. Another is uh, uh, grow. Grow, grow with God and have a relationship with grow in him where you get to know God more and more and more. And you do that from reading the Bible, reading the word of God, get, learning the truth of uh, And then once you learn the truth, you, you know how to act, you know how to think, you know where to go, you know, and, and that's what we're looking for. We're always looking for someone that can show us the way. Right. But, uh, you know, getting in the Bible is going to show you the right path, where to go. Right. Hebrews 13, 15, because of Jesus' sacrifice, we don't offer animal sacrifices as Noah did. Instead, we are told to offer God the sacrifice of praise, Hebrews 13, 15, and the sacrifice of thanksgiving, Psalms uh, 116, 17. Every human activity except sin can be done for God's pleasure. If you deal with an attitude of praise, you can wash dishes, repair a machine, sell a product, Right, computer program, grow a crop, raise a family for the glory of God. So everything you do is not just, you know, oh, I go to church on Sunday. It's it's everything. Like you can drive your car praising God. You can, you know, go to work praising God. You can, uh, 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 you know, type an email praising God. Everything you do throughout your day, you can give it the glory to God. Right. Like a proud parent, God especially enjoys watching you use your talents, your abilities has given you. God has intentionally gifted us diff differently for his enjoyment. He has made some to be athletic, some to be analytical. He may he may be gifted, at, you may be gifted at mechanics or mathematics or music or a thousand other skills. All these abilities can bring a smile to God's face. In Psalms 33, 15 says he has shaped us. Shaped each person in turn. Now he watches everything we do. So he everyone's different, right? But we uh Sometimes we get jealous because someone is bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, better looking than us, right? And, and God has uh, created you specifically to be you, uh, not to be someone else. So find out what you're good at, what you're gifted at. And, and those are God-given skills, God-given talents. And once you find out your gifting, what you're good at, um, share it. You know, give, share your skills, your talents, your abilities, your your uh, knowledge, your wisdom with other people so that you can uh, build them up on, and help them grow, right? And that's what the whole uh, body of Christ, the whole church is supposed to be, is that everyone comes together and they come with their specific, unique talents, unique skills, unique resources, uh, unique gifting, unique wisdom, revelation, and they come together and we all just share each other, share each other's 
uh, uh, giftings and we build each other up and we grow together, right? Um, that's what the whole body of Christ is supposed to be, the church is supposed to be, supposed to be doing that, right? So I end here. Um, so if anyone has any questions, reach out. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. So I want to end here in prayer. I just want to thank God for all his blessings. Thank God for just giving us our purpose and why we're here, to telling us you know, what we should be doing, where we should be going. We just want to thank God for just giving us you know, computers and internet and clothes to wear, food to eat, water to drink. Um, just living in this country, if you make over 30000 a year, the stats say you're, you're a top 1% income earner in the whole world. So just being in the United States, we are blessed um and 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 and, uh, and and we we have so much so much blessings here in the united states just being here um you know we're, we're top one percent income earner in the world that we we can you know it's, it's hard you know once we realize that it's hard to complain and, and be like oh i don't have enough i don't have enough we we, we have, we're more than blessed being here right just want to thank god for all his blessings uh just ask his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in our minds, in our hearts, in our eyes, and what we see, in our ears, and what we hear, in our hearts, and what we believe, in our hands, and what they do, in our feet, and where we walk, and in our, anyone that needs healing, we ask the kingdom to come and just heal, heal our blood, heal our bones, heal our organs, heal, heal our, our minds, heal our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and we just ask for a uh, uh, prosperous business real estate businesses to come out of these trainings pros prospering so that we can be a blessing to our families blessing to our churches blessing to our neighbors blessings to everyone around us in jesus name we ask and we pray amen god bless so we'll be back here next week uh monday and reach out if you guys have any questions uh at all